Hey, what's up, guys? This is John from the Undercover Brony. Now, I am here with an individual that is up and coming in the Brony fandom, Fallon Cortez. How are you today? Hello there. I'm I'm very I'm very excited for this. Thank you so much for this opportunity. All the same. Absolutely. So the first question I have for you, as I ask everyone this, because it's such such a fun and varied question. But what is your Brony story? How did you get into the fandom? Mm. Uh, well, that's a very interesting focus. It all started back way in 2017, like nearly four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. And I've never even heard of My Little Pony back then. And I only saw like clips of it on the internet in like memes or just random videos I like watching. And it all like began in like a Discord chat room when I was in with my friends that I originally made over on another platform called Furry Amino. And we were all just bored one night, and one of them, some of them, just like started sending in clips of My Little Pony, and I was like, "What's all this? This is just girly rubbish." And mm -hmm. like, and they were like, "What? No, it's not. You should try and watch it." Like, I don't think so, guys. That it's not really my style, and you know, the usual cliche story of boys not liking girl, girl stuff and all that. Mm -hmm. But then. On that same night, I was I was like late up and and I was like high on coke and all the time and, and I was like you know what I might as well just give it a shot and fun fact I watched the first episode or specifically look look before you sleep mm -hmm. and I've decided okay this is kind of good but one more episode and then I'm done with it mm -hmm. so then I started directly at season one episode one friendship is magic and. I did not stop watching until the 13th episode for Weather Friends until 4 o'clock in the bloody morning. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I didn't even realize that either. And, oh God, what have I, what have I turned into? Mm -hmm. And then it all just started off from there. I, like, I gained, like, a small passion for it. And, like, okay, I might as well just look around and see. And I saw all the stories and artwork that featured all the ponies and the universe itself. And I just... I developed into it and I grew a lot into it. It was really interesting and it intrigued me in a way because similar to the way that I got into the furry fandom, this was like, I'm almost a parallel in a way. And I, I got comfortable with it and thought, hey, this is not so bad. Why was I even being a kind of a prick in the first place? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know when you mentioned how I'm just going to watch one episode, one more episode and be done with it. Those are famous last words before mm. the inevitable happens. Uh, well, it definitely was. The inevitable did the inevitable did happen because I, I was just hooked in on the first episode. The mm. Friendship is Magic 2 parter, it like amazed me so much. And with all the stuff that was going on concerning the story, the characters, everything worked so well and like organized in a way that I could actually tolerate the show for what it was. And then I just kept going through the Ticketmaster, back Apple Bucks season, all the way to Full Weather Friends. And it was decent in like the middle stuff. But then when it got to the end, I was really like addicted to it. And you know what? It's not so bad. And it kind of reminded me of the shows that I used to watch as a kid. And I thought, you know what? This isn't so bad. And then I just discovered the fandom after that. And okay, there's other people that like this stuff. I'm not alone after all. Mm -hmm. So my next question for you is, uh, what do you use for your recording and editing? So yeah, I I use I use the Adobe products as 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 mischievous and like bad they sound with their subscription service. Fun fact: I'm going to be exposing myself. I pirated my software because forget paying for all that. And yeah, I. I did. I use Premiere Pro for my video editing and Photoshop for my thumbnail editing. It's pretty much everything that I learned while I was in college. Because fun fact, I was I was still learning in college when I first started my YouTube channel, and everything that on my channel, old old videos are just absolute poor editing, and they're just usual jump cuts and awkward pauses. I had no idea how to do all that because I didn't have the knowledge, and I was still studying that kind of that subject but mm. as i grew more into it and learned more i grew more comfortable with my skills and up to now from where i am now with my experience with editing and illustration skills i can definitely say that i'm more profound and proud of myself for what i've taught myself with these skills on the on the programs yeah 
Yeah. Well, it's kind of funny. One of my next questions for you is um, you have mentioned before that you have a degree in creative media. Um, oh, yeah. Has that helped you keep the entertainment factor engaging and interesting? It, I definitely believe it has. It's for certain because... In college, I, I did I did have to do some like acting like classes and learn how to be like active and energetic on camera. And when I first started the whole channel, it I was really camera shy and I couldn't really speak up to anybody. And even when it was directly in front of a camera, I was really anxious because it was just the afterthought of what people would think. Like, okay, I'm gonna be reading the comments. I hope no one's too mean, mm -hmm. but. As I, as I started out, it was all just like really heartwarming and positive and I did really appreciate it and it did help me open up a bit more and become more extru exuberant with myself. If I'm going to make this whole YouTube channel a thing, a career in my future, I've got to lean into it and just express myself how I would in real life. And the creative media production degree definitely helped bring that side out in me because I used to be so silly and just really like reclusive i would say mm -hmm. because i didn't really have much friends and all that and but now putting myself on the internet thanks to my experience in college it i would say that it, i helped to become more outgoing with myself and i'm just happy in general there you go so my next question is uh you your channel has dabbled in many different things it's very much kind of a variety channel you've done stuff like you know, random videos, let's plays, your nay, yay or nay, which is more of a review format. Yeah. Comic dubs, and more recently, the reactions of Tell Your Tale <laughs> and the new My Little Pony stuff. Uh, what has been your favorite to produce? I honestly can't pick because they are, they're all special in their own kind of way. The, the, the random videos, they're just easy and quick to make, and they're just a bunch of fun. The Let's Plays, they do take a bit more longer time to produce, but they're really rewarding, and it just gives me a bit more fun, because if they're, like, any theme-specific ones, like My Little Pony or just furry ones, I can I can just feel happy with myself. The Yay or Nays, that, that originally started out as an experimental series, because mm -hmm. I had watched a lot of channels that did this reviewing thing, and inspired by different like channels like Josh Scorcher, Golden Fox, and all those other famous YouTubers that have done those kind of reviews. I was like, you know what? I might as well do one myself and see how it goes out. And it became the first, the Friendship is Magic Part 1 review actually managed to become my most viewed video for a while. I thought after that, you know what? This is kind of, this is kind of creditable. I should do more. Mm -hmm. And even though they take the longest time to make and they are arduous to make because I had to come up with different skits and funny moments just to make it that more entertaining for everyone in my audience. Mm -hmm. I would say that they're a fun experience. The comic dobs, even though I may not have made many of those, they're, they're, they're just quick and easy to make as usual. And reactions, I can just easily make one of them within three hours and um, I get lots of views, but mm -hmm. I'm not gonna brag anyway. The numbers are are, are 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 substantial and they do they do pay off yeah you know you were mentioning your uh, inspiration being individuals like josh gorcher and golden fox I, I definitely understand that um as i have interviewed uh some of those individuals myself uh and hearing mm -hmm. the way they go through their creative process as well it really does go to show how much their ideas of how to make things work can also inspire others uh, to do something uh, of that caliber. Oh, certainly they do. I, I guess in the end, it all ultimately comes like down to them that gets more respect and they pass on their like legacy to the new people that come in because old people and the new people just coming in and come together just to like inspire a whole new generation of people that want to do this stuff too. It's, I do find it really good and it does pay off because people like, you know, with the Lost Narrator, Magpie Pony and all the other people that I've mentioned, they they do give shout outs to, to smaller channels and it just helps them grow and, you know, it makes them, it brings this community together because, you know, friendship is magic after all. And 
it just expands everyone together and the fandom just just gets a positive light every once in a while. Yeah. I do find it really substantial. It gives the entire fandom a real sense of community that you don't see in a lot of other fandoms. Oh, yes, it it, it does. I do, I do appreciate it for what it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my next question for you is, where did you get the idea for the name Fluff Butts for your audience? Howdy, Fluff Butts, it's me, Fallen War Point Cortez Colt. Howdy, Fluff Butts, it's me, Fallen War Point Cortez Colt. Howdy, Fluff Butts, it's me, Fallen War Point Cortez Colt. Uh, that's another story, because that also originated on Furry Amino, the platform mm-hmm. that I mentioned previously, because... Back in the day, it was one year pr- previously as well, 2016. Mm-hmm. I stumbled upon the furry fandom back then, and I joined the furry amino community on the app, and it was just a small going channel, and I didn't know what to do, so I just continued to blog every single day. And as soon as and and the more I grew in numbers, I thought, okay, maybe this is something I should really try to like attach on. So I named my my audience Fluffed Butts. It, as as crazy and weird as that kind of may sound, it it did. It was it was a funny like thing to call everyone. Could and then I just you know grew into it and it it was it was a really like positive thing for me. I just like to call them fluff butts and you know they're the people that support me and as long as I call them that, I'm sure that we can all get along and I appreciate every single one of them. One of the other things that. I find interesting about a a smaller channel like yours is that, you know, especially when it comes to engaging with your audience, it's, it's a lot easier to do so because you don't have that massive audience that's just constant comments pointing, constant likes, constant views. Because it's a more of a smaller community, you're able to engage with them a lot more and a lot and have a lot easier time with that engagement. Yeah, I certainly can. It's I think being a smaller channel is does like provide a lot more like rewards than a bigger channel because mm. you're more together with your audience. It's more personal, and even though you may grow, you may grow throughout the years. Like slowly getting to know your fans, it really does a lot for you because you know how much your fans love you and how much you can just like respond to them like your friends and family. It's it's like a really like close experience and i do appreciate that for what it is and every single one of them that just like come in and just stumble upon my channel and if they if they don't like my content then that's fine you can just dislike it anyway but and for those people that do come in and like my content for what it is i i do i I just embrace every one of them and welcome them with open arms absolutely so my next question is uh your oc is a very unique one in the fandom, you know, because it's oh. both a fox OC for the furry side and a pony OC for the pony side. Um, yeah. How did you uh, create those characters? Hmm. Well, Fo- Folan came first, Folan Wild Four, and then Cortez, Cortez Cult came afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um, Folan went through a lot of different changes throughout the years because he used to be originally called. Fallen Musky. Okay. And I am I am definitely ashamed of that second name. <laughs> and that was that it went it was like that for like about a year or so before I realized, oh god, that surname is a bit too strange and I need to change it right away. And that's when it came up with what Wild Paw for his second name and I thought, yep, yeah, that is it. That is solid. That is my boy. That is him who he is. And then his design just went through several changes. Like from leg spots to leg stripes and with different heterochromia eyes from blue to yellow and then it just went yellow red to the usual blue. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was just unique and despite all many many other fursonas having that different kind of eye color and different like patterns, I decided to like try and make it something like special for myself. Like I don't care if anyone else has similar ones, it's my character and you know I, I appreciate it for what he is. Mm-hmm. And for Cortez Colt, he was originally going to be co- he was originally going to be an alicorn. Okay. He was he was going to be the prince the prince of nature, mm-hmm. and he was originally called Limestone. 
and as soon as I like joined the fandom, I realized how popular and kind of I wouldn't say like overused, but there was a lot of Alicorn OCs, and I mm -hmm. thought, okay, maybe. Maybe I shouldn't do this species because there's a lot of them, and I'm not really associated with the law back then. Mm -hmm. And but then I, as soon as I learned more, like okay, there's not really many of them, but I guess I could make a different character. But for my main OC, probably not. And then the more that I watched the show, the more episodes I watched, the more seasons I came across. I really wanted to make Cortez like original for myself, and that's when I came up with the idea that he should be a dragon pony hybrid, mm -hmm. and. Especially as well, because I even got a plushie made of him as well. That is so cute. That's adorable. He, yeah, and he became like a dragon pony, and he he resides in the dragon lands, and he owes his like death to Queen Ember. That's how he became one originally. He was he was originally a um, a pegasi, but after a deathly accident that nearly caused his death in the dragon lands, mm -hmm. he got resurrected and transformed into like a half between. Pad stallion and dragon and that's pretty much how they came along cortez yeah. didn't really have many like death design variations he only had like one and then second one was like pretty much complete mm -hmm. i do also have to say that i do like having uh your oc have a hat especially because you mm. don't see that very often outside of maybe applejack so it's interesting to see uh, an oc uh with that more unique uh, aspect to him uh this the, the stetson yeah the stetson is obviously inspired from apple dash i mean apple jack god damn it <laughs> my least favorite ship coming out of my mouth yes yeah yeah try and diss me whoever's watching but rary jack is my number one ship the apple dash is terrible the true op ships are rare jack twi pie and flutter dash yeah there you have a good taste in there mate Applejack, yeah, it was obviously inspired from Applejack with her hat, and usually, I don't really think Cortez is like Stetson has much of a really appeal, because, you know, it's just an accessory, and he's all that he is, mm -hmm. but the way I made um, Cortez's Stetson, like, unique to him, is like, I gave him a name, and I wouldn't say that he's alive, but he is sentient in a way. Mm -hmm. He just He just likes to stay on top of Cortez's hat head every time. And whenever, like, Cortez gets endangered or threatened, may, in a way, like, gain life and protect him. It's a bit confusing, but that's all I got. So, my next question for you is, uh, do you have any fun stories uh, through the process of making these videos? Well, my memory is kind of fuzz frosty and all that. But I do remember one time that when I was recording the script for one of my yay or nay videos, mm -hmm. I think it was the bridal gossip one, I I was like trying to like yell all inside my little condensed room because there's a spare room in my house mm -hmm. and that's where I usually record the audio. I was screaming a bit too much and my neighbors kind of got notice of what of like what was happening through the wall and they thought someone well they knocked on the door and in the middle of my recording and i opened it and they said is everything okay it, we heard someone was probably being murdered they were like oh no everything's fine and I'm, I'm just i'm just recording don't worry there's no need to get freaked out and they thought oh, okay but can you please keep it down like unfortunately i can't i'm recording something and then they just walked off in a half like why did we even come to your house anyway <laughs> You know, that's when you know you're recording a true blood-curdling scream. Ah, uh, yes, it, it it was like I don't I, I don't even know I don't even know why they got that idea from, but you know, living in a busy neighborhood is a conundrum. Mm -hmm. My next question for you is: You are actually the first interview that I've had um, post the beginning of Generation Five. Uh, what has been your thoughts oh. on Generation Five so far? No, don't don't make me go on a whole tantrum about this. But Generation Five is awesome so far. Mm -hmm. It does not deserve the hatred. It still deserve it still deserves the chance to flourish. Cause you know we've only had the movie and Tell Your Tale and the Make Your Mark special release so far. The actual show hasn't even been released yet, and 
I've seen all the negativity on Instagram and like Twitter compl composed, like directed towards Generation 5. Like, why should it have been a con con continuation to Generation 4 anyway? It should be its own show. And the different shows like contrasting with YouTube to tell your tale and Netflix on Make Your Mark. Why does it have to be two different shows? Well, I can certainly say that Generation 5 is like the generation that I am going to be growing up with because it is the first generation that I've been with since the very beginning. Mm -hmm. I only was introduced to Generation 4 in 2017 when I first joined the furry fandom. And this kind of journey with me with Generation 5 is is in, is like, um, what's the word for it? Inf influ influential because mm -hmm. um, Generation 5 with its uniqueness being like an almost sequel to, Gen to Friendship is Magic. I do find that really special because, you know, it gives an idea of expanding the universe somewhat. And, you know, since the last problem from Season 9 left the ending like kind of open i would say and even the creators came out about that on twitter like it's open to all the fans you can make make of it what do you want mm. and you know generation 5 is the i would say the almost perfect like response to that because new characters brought in a new generation a new style i think it's really amazing and it deserves the support the movie was i would say above average at least it's not perfect and mm. i even rated it like a 7 out of 10 it's a yay, but I feel like they could have done a bit more with it because judging from the concept art that I've seen, it what it was planning to be something much bigger, but then it was just condensed down because, you know, family friendliness. And then with the release of Tell Your Tale, all the episodes, in all honesty, are just mediocre, but you have to make, make a bit of what it is. And I do like the slice of life antics that come out of it with the different episodes even though they're five minutes long and all that, they're different unique stories and it gives it a chance to expand the world beforehand before we get the actual stuff on Netflix. And then coming to Make Your Mark special, I have never seen a special so diverse in the fandom ever since like Equestria Girls was released. Mm -hmm. Like people were saying it's horrible, it's a disaster. And I'm there like, what? No, it's not. Like. Have you even, like, seen it properly? The characters in it make up for what is, like, almost a mediocre story, I would say. Because the, the story is arguably a bit poor. Because the ending was rushed and there was not really much going for it, I would say. But I would, but I would definitely say that the characters, like, improve on those things. Because they just... Each, each of them have like a plot thread going throughout and it all comes together in the end with the Earth Ponies like coming together and getting the magic after all. And then it leaves it on an open note with the villain reveal and which I'm very excited for because it's mm -hmm. an alicorn. Like we've never seen a an other alicorn a apart from probably Daybreaker or Nightmare Moon, but those were just dreams. Mm -hmm. This time it's an actual villain and, and you know what? I was very hyped up for that. And with the questions of how, like, Equestria came to be, where did the magic go, how did the crystals get formed, it leaves it on a really, like, optimistic note, because it gives us some a sense of excitement for what's to come. And maybe, hopefully next month, we will probably see how, how well or badly Generation 5 will go. And practically, no matter what happens, I will be smiling along the way for what happens, because I'll give it the chance it deserves. Well, I'll say this. Uh, I feel like I mostly agree with you in a lot of ways. I felt like the movie was definitely above average. Uh, Tell Your mm -hmm. Tale has been consistently surprising me because I was expecting something akin to Pony Life, which was oh, too fast-paced, too high-octane, uh, high, uh, high octane, and <laughs> not generally just not a good show. But with Tell Your Tale, it knows the time limit it has, and it takes that time limit and uses it to craft a good short story, short slice of life story, in addition to yeah. the fact that they also still have their little moments of emotional resonance. And I really, really love that. Make Your Mark, for me at least, I really wanted to like it, but it was a little too rough around the edges for me to genuinely mm. enjoy it. However, I remember we were talking 
uh, a few days ago about how I feel like this is more something akin to something like Star Wars The Clone Wars, where it had a very oh. rough start, but it was still able to get its footing and become true something truly great. So I feel like yeah. that Gen 5 is going to go probably more on that same path. Yeah, it's almost like it's it's just it's just it's still like learning the ropes and all that but as soon as it puts its hoof in the door it will definitely become something really memorable and big to all audiences i do agree with you on make your markers like you know it's kind of like a bridge story like in between the actual series and tell your tale tell your tale yeah it does have like the five minute like light time limit and that's kind of restrictive and it doesn't really allow for much story to happen but at least it's not Pony Life after all, because that, that show itself is just a acid trip, to be honest. And mm -hmm. I only watched like one episode and was like, okay, this is not it. But yeah. tell your tale, I did initially I did initially hate on the idea that why is this a thing? It should not be on YouTube. And this art style is terrible. But upon watching it for like the first four episodes, I was, okay, this is not so bad. I Everything is all right, and the stories are different, and at least the writers know what they were doing with the characters, and everyone's still on point despite the new voice actors, which I will also still support, because they don't deserve the hate either. Oh, absolutely. And no, they should, they do not. And everything else about Tell Your Tale with the individual stories and different characters being brought in to expand everything just before they get into the actual stuff coming soon. I would say that it's definitely paying off. So my last question for you is give some shout outs on like uh, what links people can follow you on and whatnot. Oh, um, I also have Twitter, which is um, at where, where Fox Mango, right? That's on Twitter on Instagram, Fallon Cortez, which is all just one name. And also you can find me on my YouTube channel, which is Fallon Cortez all the same. That's all the links I have. I maybe I'll expand onto different platforms soon enough, but those are the ones I have right at the moment. All right, then. Well, thank you so much for coming on for this interview. This was an absolute blast to do. Uh, I really enjoyed it, too. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. And until next time, that's it from me, John. And this is from me, Fluffbots. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you could, you will all subscribe to this awesome guy. Do leave a like on this video and comment your thoughts down below of what you thought of this into interview as well. And also subscribe to me. Hello. Go ahead. I need the numbers. Thank you. But in all seriousness, thank you so much for this, John. I did appreciate it. Absolutely. And without further ado, peace out, dragon. And this is Fallon Cortez. Thank you so much.